Hi, this is Jane Boatman Geller from Boatman Geller, and I am doing my very first ever video tutorial on um, how I make our designs for Boatman Geller. I love watching other tutorials online, and I thought, you know, maybe there's someone out there that would find this fun as well to sort of see. Okay, see, I'm messing up now. So it's going to be rough. Like, I'm totally new at this. Um, you know, I spend my time actually drawing and designing, not making video tutorials. So it's a learning curve. Um, but what I want to do is just take you through um, the process of one of the ways that we create patterns. One of the ways I create patterns for Boatman Geller. So I just created um, a little color palette that I've been thinking about. And I originally didn't have orange in there, but I thought it'd be kind of a nice pop. Otherwise, it looks a lot like our current Suzani that I'm using. So I wanted something a little different. Um, I'm going to use um, the pen tool and work with this piece of clip art. And I have actually recorded this intro a couple times now. So I'm like, hmm, did I already say that or not? So basically, um, I'm using a piece of royalty-free clip art that I will um, work from but not follow exactly because I really want to make sure that it lends itself to being a unique Boatman Geller design and um, the best way to do that of course is to um, put myself into it as well but you know as you will see in the industry whether it's pattern design or um, for stationery or whatever it is you know clip art this royalty free existing art from uh, mostly historic elements is a fantastic place to start creating a piece. Of course, a totally unique piece will be done from scratch, but I think I would have to um, rethink the rest of my life to be able to be creating paisleys from scratch. I don't think I have enough talent or time for that right now. So I'm going to be speeding this up and um, showing you how I'm going to make this into a pattern for Boatman Geller. Thanks for watching. Hi, so I'm back and using my pen tool, I have been building up these different shapes and you can see my clip art is here at the top uh, just as a guide but I think um, and so you can see I've got these two large shapes here at the bottom and um, they're just done in outline form and then I started layering in some of the interior shapes um, and sort of playing with color and seeing how that's coming along and um, changing things um, where I thought that the look of the Paisley wasn't the feel that I wanted for Boatman Geller. So changing that, you can see, you know, changing that up. So I'm not going to use lines, um, the line of the Paisley. I think that's more of a detailed look than I want for this Paisley. But one of the things I'm trying to figure out is um, I've got a really um, intricate shape here as I follow the, the path of the um, paisley and I'm debating about whether or not to, I've tried two other shapes, do a simpler shape that um, maybe has a little bit more of a modern look than the um, more detailed one of the original paisley. Whoops, changing random layers here, random layers you can see. It's a lot of layer management. So I'm going to just keep building this and um, you know, the great thing about um, illustrators, you know, I can do it both ways. I can try it with the detailed edge and um, with a different edge and see which one I like the best. Um, so I'm liking the color palette. I've got to get some orange over here, um, but I think it's going to work well. And um, I'll be back with probably the final to show you how I'm going to repeat it and put it into product. Thanks. So I've put in a lot of detail and um, am finishing up and at this point when doing a pattern I usually stop and sort of <laughs> try and figure out will I actually be using this pattern? Does it work with our whole brand? Does it work 
with um, the upcoming release that we're doing, that sort of thing. So I'm not quite sure about this one. I really like it. I have to make sure it fits with everything else. Um, I do like the color palette, which is fun. And, um, you know, I've had a lot of fun with it, which is, you know, I guess the point. Um, so I'm going to um, finish up here, but um, there will probably be quite a bit of tweaking I do trying to get this just right and where I want it. But one of the things I do at this point is I really want to find out how it's going to look repeat, you know, as a full repeat and um, how it might look placed in product. So I thought I'd show you some of my um, tricks that I use. Certainly probably not the most um, professional way to do it, but it works for me. So that's really all that matters. So I'm working in Illustrator here. I save it as an EPS and I usually do that because it's an AI file. Um, it trims to wherever the paper edges are and I um, am not that neat and tidy. So as an EPS it will bleed the whole, you know, the size of the whole pattern. And then I choose to go into InDesign which is um, our layout program and just repeat the pattern until I get something that sort of works for me. I will then create a repeat or a pattern swatch in Illustrator. So this is just a four position only. And you can see I've tried to, you know, tighten it up. I'm not sure about these brown spaces here. Um, I added a little orange flower, seeing if that would fill it in. But that's part of the final editing. At this point, I um, export um, a uh, JPEG, sorry, um, I've done it once before so it's replacing and 300 is too high, 150 is high enough, it's a pretty large file. And this again is for position only. Um, for me to pop it into some of our layouts to see how it looks. So generally I start with a fold over note and I do something basic and at this point I'm also really looking at scale. As you can see, so we're going to um, update this. For those of you that work in um, InDesign, I'm, since I've recently made some changes over here on the right, I have to update that link. Um, so at this point, I sort of look at scale because I want to be consistent. If I scale one pattern from a fold over note to a lucite tray at a certain percentage, I try and do that throughout all the patterns so there's a consistency to sort of and a rhyme and reason to how we do it. Consistency to the look. So this is, I usually start with the smallest scale and then um, go up from there. And, and you know, it's all a matter of preference. Sometimes I'll pick a scale and I'll think, what was I thinking? Why didn't I make it bigger? And you know, at the time, it worked. So, um, so that's how this fold over note is looking right now. And then I thought I'd pop it into a lucite tray. This is our square lucite tray layout. And again, I'm going to update the link. Um, and, you know, this one's a little bit bigger. Let's do display performance. It's not letting me. Why is it not letting me update my display performance? There we go. So, um, you know, and then how we do the monogramming can, of course, change the look completely and um, there's still lots to be played with. But um, that sort of wraps up um, one of the ways we make patterns. Um, I make patterns here at Boatman Geller. Thank you for watching, particularly if you got all the way to the end. And um, I hope you'll look out for my next video. I will, I'm certain to get better and better as it goes along.